Kelly from Grace Kelly Cakes, and I'm here to show you some of my work and how to take an ordinary cake and make it extraordinary with just a few simple steps. You can take your next cake from slab to fabulous. So when we're making a cake at home, most of us probably think of a cake that looks like something like this. We have the Betty Crocker mix, the water, the oil, the eggs, 350 degrees, 25 minutes, a thing of Duncan Hines icing, and you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. A really sad slab cake. Yeah, your 9 by 13 slab cake, ice in the Pyrex splash dish, and perhaps a pretty unhappy birthday cake. Like this one. We've all seen it, we've all been there. Let's try to take that slab, sad slab cake into something a little bit more fat. So, well, I realize that we may not have all been born the ace of cakes or Martha Stewart, and magic wands just don't exist this day and time. Um, I'm going to give you five simple tips to make your next cake totally awesome and totally memorable. So the first step <laughs> is to find a reason to come up with a cake. So you have to have an occasion. You can just make an occasion, make anything, you have to have a cake. So I thought, Thanksgiving, why not save a turkey and have a chocolate turkey cake instead? Let's face it, any, any occasion is better with cake, right? Everybody loves cake. So all it takes a little bit of creativity, a little bit of time, a little bit of product that you might just be new to. Learn the steps and you can do it too. The one hint I will give you is know your audience. You wouldn't want a cake like this showing up at Aunt Tilly's 90th birthday or at your kid's birthday party. Might not go over well with the other parents or the kids or Aunt Tilly. Another hint to keep in mind is when coming up with an idea, I come up with one idea, one idea alone. Pick one theme. So this one looks a little awkward. You might think, why are there two guys on top of this cake? The bride loved the Beatles, the groom loved John Wayne, I made it work. But usually you should just stick to one theme on a cake. So when you've got your idea, you need to bake your cakes. It's best to have a homemade cake because then you can have a more dense cake, it's better for carving, and it's also more delicious. Once you've decided on the cake you need, you need to have the right size pans to make that cake to make the shape you want. Once you've baked it, make sure you cool it, freeze it so it's nice and easy to carve. Third step is to add a dimension. So you can use styrofoam, cover it with fondant, put it up on the cake to have more height, or more dimension, or you can carve the cake. All you need is a serrated knife, and you just carve it away like you would a pumpkin. It's easy, just a lot more delicious. Next step, step number four. Once you have the shape you want, whether it be simple, flat, cake 3D, then you have to put the layer of icing on that's called dirty icing. So you dirty ice it so it keeps all the crumbs inside and makes a nice smooth thing for the fondant. Once you've got it dirty iced, you can put more fondant on it, you can put Rice Krispies on it to give it more shape and detail, and that comes out with something like this. It provides more dimension. So once you've carved, shaped, dirty iced, and added the inside dimensions, now it's time for fondant. Fondant is a smooth, sugary coating icing that we like to cover the cake with. You roll it out just like pie dough and cover the cake with it. You can also add more detail to the outside of the cake at this time. When you're adding detail, <laughs> remember to keep the detail in line with the cake. This one, there wasn't much I could add, so I made the knife out of sugar, and I wrote a clever line on top of it that the wife had decided on. The guy liked bacon so much she wanted a bacon cake, but I thought this was enough detail for that cake alone. <laughs> Fondant's awesome. You can use it for anything. Remember playing with Play-Doh as a kid back in school, or clay in high school? You can do anything out of fondant you can do with clay, but you can eat it at the end, so it makes it even that much better. So use fondant to make anything. Fondant's such a great way to add detail. As I showed Ariel with the Mario Brothers cakes, you can just keep adding detail and adding detail. It's either than using writing on it with buttercream, which I'm horrible at, or um, doing detailed with buttercream. Just use fondant, gives it a nice finished look. So it gives that smooth finished look. You can also hide all your mistakes. Usually there's an unfinished edge around the bottom of the cake. Just put a necklace on or a flower. It hides all the, <laughs> hides all the mistakes. So my final hint to you tonight is when you're adding detail to a cake, make sure that you keep in mind who you're making it for. This one was for a friend. She bought some red shoes from Paris. She wanted the shoes on top of the cake. I put the shoes on top of the cake. That's personal. You don't want to make it too personal. <laughs> Something like this isn't appropriate to come out of the party. <laughs> this isn't one of mine, I swear I threaded to this cake. But you wouldn't want that cake showing up at a party. <laughs> so just remember to keep it a little bit personal, not too personal. And in the end, just try to have fun with it because whoever you're going to do it for is going to love it and they're going to think you've done something really cool. So just remember that fun is your friend and it's going to be fun.